Hi, it's Tom Harbin Book Club, and today we're reading from What Would Jefferson Do? And this is from the chapter Warlords, Theocrats, and Autocrats, Aristocrats Rise Again. Uh, the subchapter Theocrats Attack Democracy. And the uh, epigraph that we started the chapter with is from uh, President Abraham Lincoln, where he said, I am approached with the most opposite opinions and advice, and by men who are equally certain that they represent the divine will. I hope it will not be irreverent of me to say that if it is probable that God would reveal his will on such a point so connected with my duty, it might be supposed he would reveal it directly to me. Um, so this, uh, the subhead of the chapter, America is a Christian nation. No, it's a nation where a lot of Christians live. And I read about Judge Moore and his Ten Commandments thing and his statement that, you know, America was founded in Christianity and, and then um, proceed to share the founders' actual view on this. Our founders were both well-schooled in the history of the Crusades and knew from firsthand experience with Puritanism how oppressive religious men could be even with small amounts of political power. Ben Franklin fled Boston when he was a teenager in part to escape the oppressive environment created by politically powerful preachers. And for the rest of his life, he was openly hostile to the idea of a secular power being wielded by those who hold also religious power. Although he was fascinated by the spiritual experience, Franklin had little use for the organized religions of his day. In his autobiographical Toward the Mystery, he wrote, quote, I have found Christian dogma unintelligible. Early in life, I absented myself from Christian assemblies, end quote. In his autobiography, Franklin talks about he came, how he came to this way of thinking, quote, My parents had early given me religious impressions and brought me through my childhood piously in the dissenting, in the Puritan way. But I was scarce 15 when, after doubting by, several, by, several, by turns of several points, as I found them disputed in the different books I read, I began to doubt of revelation itself. Some books against deism fell into my hands. They were said to be the substance of sermons preached at Boyle's lectures. It happened that they wrought an effect on me quite contrary to what was intended by them. For the arguments of the deists, which were quoted to be refuted, appeared to me much stronger than the refutations, and I soon became a thorough deist, end of quote. Franklin, like most of the more well-known founders, was a deist, subscribing to a philosophy made popular by Unitarians who held that the Creator made the universe long ago and has since chosen not to interfere in any way, that, <clears throat> excuse me, that neither Jesus nor anybody else was divine, or alternatively, that we are all divine, and that there is only one God and not three. Another founding deist who resisted giving political power to those with religious power was George Washington. Jefferson's diary entry for February 1st, 1799 reads, quote, When the clergy addressed General Washington on his departure from the government, it was observed in their consultation that he had never, on any occasion, said a word to the public which showed a belief in the Christian religion. And they thought that they should so pen their address as to force him at length to declare fidelity whether he was a Christian or not. They did so. However, Jefferson noted, the old fox was too cunning for them. He answered every article of their address, particularly except that which he passed over without even notice. Just, uh, Jefferson concluded that Washington, quote, never did say a word on the subject in any of his public papers, and that Governor Morris, Morris, a close friend of Washington's, has often told me that General Washington believed no more in that Christian system than, Governor, than he himself did, than Governor Morris did, end of quote, from Jefferson. In fact, President George Washington supervised the language of a treaty with African Muslims that explicitly stated that the United States was a secular nation. The treaty with Tripoli worked out under Washington's guidance and then signed into law the next year by John Adams in 1797 reads, quote, as the government of the United States is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself no character of en enmity against the laws, religion or tranquility of Muslims, and as the said states never have entered into any war or act of hostility against any uh, Muslim nation, it is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries, end of quote. But for the founders, this wasn't just an issue of being Christian or not. They didn't want any organized religion mixing its functions with government. For example, on February 21st, 1811, President James Madison vetoed a bill passed by Congress that authorized government payments to a church in Washington, D.C. to help the poor. Faith-based initiatives were a clear violation, in Madison's mind, of the First Amendment doctrine of separation of church and state. 
and could lead to a dangerous transfer of political power to religious leaders. Caring for the poor was a public and civic duty, a function of government, and should not be allowed to become a hole through which churches could reach and seize political power or the taxpayer's purse. Funding a church to provide for the poor would establish, in Madison's words, a legal agency, a legal precedent that would break down the walls of separation the founders had put between church and states to protect Americans from religious zealots gaining political power. Thus, Madison said in his veto message to Congress, he was striking down the proposed law because it helped a church to, quote, provide for the support of the poor and the education of poor children of the same, which, Madison warned, would be a precedent for giving to religious societies. That would be giving federal funds. Now, uh, things have certainly changed since then with the faith-based initiative program that started under Reagan has now exploded. But anyhow, the book is What Would Jefferson Do?